All right, so you may remember from our finished group file, we had all these different mappings. Now we've talked a bit about some of the UVs and about object and what I'm calling object UV, but let's get the rest of these mappings figured out and made, and then we'll get into actually setting up this group and all these empty objects. So before that, we're going to need some proper geometry. Right now, our test plane is two by two blender units. And in usual scaling, one blender unit equals one meter. That's the scale I use for all my characters. So these are giant. So we're going to go ahead and first of all, apply our X rotation with control A, and then also scale these down to a more appropriate size, which I happen to remember is 0.05, and then apply that scale. And since we need two eyes, we're going to need a mirror modifier move this over a bit, leave a bit of space in between. I'm also going to subdivide these once, just so we have a point in the center. And we can do our 3D curse there if we need to make anything in the middle. So there's our geometry with some same dimensions. So now that we have this geometry, what exactly is going on with our UV map, and how do we get more options? The finished file I showed that we had the left and right mask and then also mirrored, non-mirrored, and extended UVs. How do we get those? Let's start with duplicating our object and we'll apply our mirror modifiers so that we can take a look at what we've got right now. We can see our texture is getting mirrored on both sides. We'll pop up a UV editor, get into edit mode, and we can see there is our UV maps. This is the right side. And if I invert that, I have the left side. And we can see that's mirrored and they're sitting on top of each other. So since they're on top of each other, we can't separate them. Anything that happens on the right will also happen on the left. Of course, I keep saying right because it's on the right side of the screen, but since this is eyes and we're facing them, this is actually the left eye and this is the right eye. But let's not get hung up on that. So if we wanted to be able to do different things on each one, we need them to be offset from each other. But now, of course, this is minus one, and so it's not getting anything on it unless we go and we set our image to be tiled. And then we are getting it, and it's mirrored. So that could be one of our UV maps. That's our mirrored one. And now we could go ahead and make a second UV map. And in this version, we'll take this and we will scale it on X by negative one, which flips it. So now we have a non-mirrored UV map, but where we can still put different things on each eye. And we can even make a third one. And for this one, let's use our cursor here and scale this over by 0.5. And now it's extended across both. And it's stretched vertically, so I suppose we could scale it down by 0.5. And now this is as if the image was going up to here and here. So it's no longer stretching, but it's only using half the UV grid. But this way we could have a texture that is one texture pending across both of them, which could come up for, I don't know, but we'd like to have options. So we have all those options now, but we also have three different UV maps. So what if there's a way where we could do this with only one UV map and do all these transforms in the nodes? We'll delete this duplicate and go back to our original. We're going to make exactly that. So here, as we know, we have the mirrored. And if we wanted to offset one side, like we did before, we can use the offset U here. Set it to minus one. And if I scrub this, we can actually see that it has moved it over, just like when we separated the two UV maps. And the reason we can tell this is different is we can actually go and separate our X, Y, Z and take a look here, looking at X, that looks like, well, it's black there, and then the gradient starts. But actually, if you remember, we can use map range and set this to minus one to see what's really going on. And this looks a bit weird because of the way the mapping works, because these are mirrored. So zero or minus one is here, and then it gradients up to one here. And on this side, it goes from, um, or sorry, it goes up to 0.5 here. Then on this side, it's going from 0.5 to 1. So that's a bit confusing, but what's a bit simpler is if we make a mask for left and right here. We can use a greater than node and set greater than 
zero, and now we have a right and left mask. And we're going to be using that. So let's go ahead and do some organization. I'm saying left versus right because left is actually one, the left eye, even though it's on the right side. Now we'll be able to use these, this mask to do different things on the different eyes. And the first thing we want to do is have control over what's on each one. So at the moment, this is the same texture going on both. But if I turn off Extend now, we can see it's no longer repeating here. But what if I wanted this texture to be on this eye instead of this eye? Well, we need a different mapping for that. We get our usual mapping node, and if I move things by minus one, we can see that it moves over to this eye. And again, it's a bit confusing because this is mirrored, but this is basically moving the texture to match up with our offset UV. And we can use our mask actually to combine this. Let's get a color mix node and mix this back with the original UV. And there we go, there's our mirrored UVs. And what this is doing is it's saying where this mask is white, which is on this side, use the original UV, and where it's black, use this offset UV. If I move this around, we can see that quite clearly. So we'll organize this as well. I'm going to use Control H to hide most of that node because we don't really need to see it. And check these into a frame, and we'll call that mirrored UVs. Now let's do essentially the same thing again, and this will be for non-mirrored UVs. We'll call these. We'll need the same mask. And for this, what we want is minus one scale. So we can see here, we still have this separated. This is still the same texture appearing, but with two different mappings, but this time it's not mirrored. Let's do a little bit more clean up on that. Everything doesn't become a complete mess. All right, I've done a little bit more node cleanup, and now we can start on the extended UVs, which again is the one where it's going to stretch across both eyes as if it was one map. So we'll, what we need for that is instead of this being zero to one and zero to one, we need this to be zero and then stretch all the way across to one. So that means we need to remap some values. If we take a look at this, there's our 0 to 1. We want to see our minus 1. So again, this goes 0 to 0.5 and 0.5 to 1. But we want to cut this into two parts. So this one will be minus 1 to 0. That's going to run from 0 to 0.5. Then we'll take another one. And this one will be 0 to 1 and run from 0.5 to 1. And we'll do the same trick of using a mix RGB and our left right mask to factor between the two. So now we're seeing 0 to 0 0.5 and then 0 0.5 to 1 on the different sides. And we're going to need to recombine these, of course. And that can be chucked in our texture. And now we see that our texture is starting here, going here, and then to here. So we need to flip this side. And that's pretty easy. We just flip these two. And now our texture stretches across both. But like what I showed on the UV maps before, it's squished on the y-axis. So it's currently in a 2 to 1 aspect ratio. If we wanted it to be 1 to 1, like a larger square, we can go here with a math node on y and multiply that and now if we set that 
to say 0.5, it's the proper aspect ratio. We're just cutting off the top half of the texture. So I am going to leave that on one because this would probably be used for texture painting, in which case the squishing doesn't matter, or you might be using a different resolution of texture. But that's how that bit works. And now we have all three of our different types of UV mapping. We have our mirrored, our flipped, and our extended. So this extended UV setup is neat if you're bringing in an external texture that's already set up that has multiple eyes, but there is a major problem with it if you want to do texture painting. If we're working with our regular mirrored UVs, then texture painting is no problem. You paint on one side, it's mirrored on the other, and same with the flipped. But with the extended, it doesn't really work. And that's because the texture paint mode has no idea that all these nodes exist. It's acting like it's still the regular UVs. In fact, if we're in just texture paint mode instead of rendered mode, then you can see what's going on. So if we do want to paint into our extended UVs, we do have to make a separate UV map like before. Let's go ahead and do that. We will have to apply our mirror modifier, but we'll have to do that for other reasons in the future anyway, so that's not a big deal. We'll apply it, make ourselves a UV map. Let's rename the original Set that to the default, plug that into our texture, so we're just looking at that. Now, object mode, UV editor, we can see this is this, is our uh, right eye. We're going to have to invert this, so scale x, median point, scale x minus 1, and then we'll scale everything with the 2D cursor on x 0.5, and there is our extended mapping again. And you could scale it on Y 0.5 if that's what you're using to paint. And now that lines up with these extended UVs. So you could paint a texture with this UV map and then still use this UV map to map it once done. That's it for this video covering the different UV maps. On the next video, we'll be talking about setting up the actual objects and the rest of this eye vectors group. Remember, you can get the full eye setup already if you support me on Patreon either in February or March, or you can pick it up on Gumroad for slightly more. As I continue making these videos, there will probably be updates to the file, but you'll get those too. Thanks and see you next video.